My name is Courtney Evans and I am from Hollister, California. I have four children. Um, I'm a divorced mom and my means of survival is my business. And it is a small business, it is a new business, and it was struggling before COVID. I opened my business almost five years ago, the Kamal Yoga Studio, the only yoga studio in San Benito County. In March, I closed my business like everyone else, two weeks to flatten the curve. We rely on each other as people in San Benito County, and we know who our neighbors are. We know who our law enforcement is. We know who our city council members are and our county supervisors and our teachers and our board um, for education. In March of 2020, when I did close my business, after about four weeks and listening to the Board of Supervisors meetings, I started to listen and connect with other Board of Supervisors meetings and other people in neighboring counties very early on. Um, Fresno County, Monterey County, Santa Cruz County, Santa Clara County, and I noticed that they were all the same. The, um, the agenda was the same. The conversation was the same. This doesn't seem real in the sense that it's the same everywhere. Um, I thought that we would have some really big outbreaks in the bigger cities and that we would see something different in these communities like mine where people are very they're spaced apart. We don't have the amount of population per capita like Santa Clara and San Francisco. So I was confused as to why our community was being treated the same as a San Francisco or a New York, and it was just these blanket rules. Um, something just isn't right as in regards to the information that we were being given as community members. And so I co-founded a group that we titled hashtag open SBC for open San Benito County. And we were deemed as non-believers that we thought the virus is fake. And that was never our platform nor our belief. The community was weakening through not being able to gather with each other, not at a school board meeting, not in church, not um, as family members. Every aspect of life was being taken away. The way our government is set up, the way that we have checks and balances, it is set up for the people to ask questions and that was being very quickly taken away. Our governor needed our local leaders to implement, put fear, and in some cases, including mine, um, to make criminals. I felt that Gavin Newsom was putting out blanket instructions and guidance and mandates for every single county in California to implement. And that just didn't make any sense logically, even scientifically. So it did not make sense for our community in the way that it would make sense for San Francisco. Our county board of supervisors and our city council, our elected officials, were attacking members of Open SBC and attacking our founding members. Every day that went by, I became more and more passionate about undoing what they have done to my community, pulling people apart, closing churches, the depression that was coming in, um, the children that were suffering not being in school. I felt more and more passionate about digging deeper and continuing to press on and ask questions. I was at every county supervisors meeting. I had sat down in a row by myself at the board of supervisors meeting holding my phone, a pen, and the piece of paper that I got from the internet from the state regarding masks and voting. Corner of my eye, I saw two sheriffs walking into the chambers rather quickly. And I just set my head down and I hoped and prayed that they weren't coming for me. And sure enough, before I knew it, I, there was a sheriff right next to me and he said, get up. Very stern and almost like that there was an emergency, that the place needed to be evacuated. But I was the only one being addressed. And he, I said, why? And he said, because I told you to. And I said, well, I think I have a right to be here. I'm going to call my lawyer. As I reached down to pick up my phone and open my phone, my hands were grabbed and he immediately twisted my wrists and the other officer came on the other side of me 
I did not resist. I told them that they were hurting me and I was bent over the seats in front of me very aggressively. And my hands were pulled behind my back, one hand from one officer, the other hand from the other officer. And they had twisted my hand so that it was almost touching the back of my neck. So sad that showing up at a board of supervisors meeting to speak gets you this treatment. So um, I did not resist. They lifted me up and walked me outside. I had five sheriffs walk me around to the outside in a parking lot, probably so nobody could see us. And a few moments later, Captain Eric Taylor came with his truck and my hands are behind my back. And he said, I know what you're doing. And um, I think that we can have this discussion at Ridgemark, which is where we both live at another time. And I said, well, I still don't know what I did. I don't know what I did. What, what did I do that was wrong? And I repeated that a few times. And he said, listen, you have two choices. You can sign a citation. You can sign a document. I don't remember his words exactly. You can sign a document and admit fault, or if you refuse to sign, I will take you to jail. And I said, well, can I call my lawyer? And he said, no, you have to choose and decide right now. So I put my head down. I had some tears welling up because I was, I was in disbelief that this was happening in my home and from my neighbor and from the people that we entrust to keep us safe. And I said, I picked my head up and I said, I haven't done anything wrong. I will not sign anything. I did nothing wrong. I had gone to court the first time from then and it was on Zoom. And I went on Zoom and I asked the court if I could ask questions to clarify. And the judge or the court commissioner, I thought it was a judge and he was just a court commissioner. Um, and he was very angry with my questions. The court has my papers at that time that I was going to be representing myself, that somebody could only be my co-counsel. I had filed papers to demand a trial by jury. I had filed papers to demand to hear and see the discoveries in the case. I had filed um, a request to have access to the, to the court library, and it's like that they ignored all of those papers and he said, I'm going to postpone this court date and you better come back with a lawyer or have a good reason why you don't have one. I've not been allowed discovery. I've not been allowed access to the court library. Um, they have not acknowledged my demand for a trial by jury. The last time I went to court, I had so many wonderful people show up to support people from all over Central California and even as far as beyond San Francisco coming in. And then I knew that there were more people that have the same questions and concerns that I do. So why, why am I being discriminated against to speak at a Board of Supervisors meeting? Why are my rights being ignored at the court um, and I'm being discriminated against? Why is the Sheriff's Department attacking a woman by herself in understanding the importance of her voice. And so without a, without a doubt, without a thought, I said, yeah, let's go. We jumped in the car. My son, who is eight, my youngest daughter, who is 15, we drove down to the Board of Supervisors meeting. And before I could put my hand on the door, the same sheriff that arrested me the first time opened the door and he said, you cannot be here and I'm going to arrest you. And I said, what are you gonna arrest me for? And he said, well, you have a warrant out for your arrest and I'm going to collect on it. I said, okay, um, well, I haven't seen the warrant. May I please see a copy of the warrant? And he, you know, you hold on a minute and more sheriffs came out from the building and a gentleman that had a gun, a badge and a polo shirt on came out and he was standing there too. 
So a few minutes went by and I asked some questions and I said, you know, can I, am I free to leave? Are you gonna arrest me or not? What am I being arrested for? Where's the warrant? And um, he said, the man that was wearing the polo, I've never seen him before. I still don't know what his name is and he was masked, everybody was, so I you know, wouldn't be able to tell their identity. Um, he said, you are going to be arrested for a warrant issued by the Superior Court. However, I would like to give you a citation to sign and appear at court. And I said, but we're just going around in circles. If you are going to collect on a warrant, arrest me and take me to the judge now. I will not sign anything. And he said, well, we don't want to arrest you in front of your kids and was kind of backtracking. And I could tell that me asking to see the judge was making them nervous. And he said, well, you know, please just sign the citation. And he had a citation book with him. I said, no, I will not. I will not sign anything. If there is in fact a warrant and you are going to collect on the warrant, I would like to be taken to the magistrate immediately. And he said, okay, well, arrest her. They put me in handcuffs. They walked me behind the building and put me into a sheriff's car. And we sat for a good 10 minutes. And I asked the sheriff that was driving, what are we waiting for? He said, we're waiting to validate your warrant. And I said, I still haven't seen the warrant. I would like to be taken to the judge immediately. Somebody called him on his cell phone and he said, well, we're going to the jail. We went to the jail door and another sheriff came out. He said, um, you know, who is this? Courtney Evans, and she won't wear a mask. And the sheriff from the jail said, well, then I suggest you move six feet away from her. She doesn't have to wear a mask if she doesn't want to. A few more officers came out of the jail and they weren't wearing masks. Um, I went in, I was patted down, I was fingerprinted, mugshot, and I asked again, may I please see the warrant? May I please see a judge? I am here, am I going in a cell? Am I gonna be here? What, what, a, what is the process? And a gentleman came over to me and said, the judge is refusing to see you. And I asked again for the copy of a warrant. He printed it out, walked it over to me and printed right on that warrant says, this person is ordered to be brought in front of a magistrate immediately. If I am not available, any available judge in the county must see this person. And I noticed that the signature on the warrant was not an ink signature, it was a stamp, and it was not a judge. So I said, I thanked the officers in the jail, and I was free to go. They didn't make me pay my $6,000 bail, and they just let me go. I believe that Eric Taylor holds all of the responsibility. He very clearly said to me that I could sign something and be free or that I could go to, to jail. I believe that he was trying to intimidate me. Why was I surrounded by six sheriffs? Why is Eric Taylor my neighbor and um, not arresting on the warrant? Why did the sheriff's department come to the Board of Supervisors meeting that day? As Americans, our voice has been silenced. I feel that we have been geared to think that we are alone and that we don't have a unity as Americans, as a community that we thought we did. And I am empowered, inspired, and determined to bring the connections back to the community, to bring the power back to the people. Um, our elected officials are not there to rule over us. They are there to speak for us and to represent us. And over the past years, that has declined. I intend to change that. I intend to ask more questions and I'm inspired to run for an office. I'm inspired to stand up in this uncomfortable space that I find myself in, but find answers and um, push the powers that be to answer the questions and turn the clock back to where they represent the people. 
I am motivated to have this country be the same and better as it was for me, for my children. That my children grow up with the same freedoms and the same equality to use their voice as every human should, especially on this great land that we live on. I intend to do my research, ask questions, and say what I don't know and find okay. I will stand who inside. does know. She can be out here with me. Mom, can you please come in the room? Can you please stand right here with me? I don't. Please get out. No. We're asking no. you to leave me. No, please do please. not touch me. I do not feel comfortable. Uh, please, please, no one, please. Please walk out of the And work together to make our state, our counties, better than, than what we've seen. Um, to bring happiness and connection back to the communities and intend to return the power back to the people, to represent the people, to educate the people on how the government works, on how important it is for them to come and speak on record, how important it is for them to be involved and understand how these systems of government work and where the balances are, that we the people have the power and it is our responsibility to bring that power back to us. In a sense, this really isn't about me, although the situation has paved a way and a journey for me to take this route. Um, and so be it, here I am today.